what's happening everybody it's uh, it's Scott today we're gonna be talking about what I think is the best camera for somebody that wants to start with medium format film photography and uh, that camera is this tiny well it's huge this camera right here this is a Pentax 645 this is the original Pentax 645 there is a 645N and a 645N2 that have autofocus this one does not this is a manual focus uh, 645 medium format camera um, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about why I got this camera and sort of how we got to this point with it uh, a year ago I was in New Zealand and uh, I went to visit Daryl Carey at Metro Cafe slash Metro Gallery in Auckland and while I was there he gave me a roll of Japan Camera Hunter Street Pan in 120 format and uh, I said well that's very nice of you Daryl I don't have a medium format camera and he said well I guess you'll have to get one so when I got back to Canada uh, I did a little research and I thought okay uh, what is the best camera to start with for medium format photography and it was between this and like a Mamiya 645 or a Fuji film uh, Texas Leica G is it a GW 690 something like that but I settled on this because I'm very familiar with Pentax 35 millimeter cameras of this era one of my favorite 35 millimeter SLRs that I own is my Pentax program plus and they're very similar in operation. So that role of Japan Camera Hunter Street Pan was actually uh, shot and developed and it turns out that the only thing I exposed on that roll of film was the backing paper because I put it in the film insert backwards. So Daryl I had a great time shooting that roll of film, my friend, and uh, I apologize. There's no shots from that roll of film. But what I did do was when I bought this camera, it ended up coming with two rolls of expired film. They expired like 20 years ago. Uh, two roll, well, it came with four rolls. Two rolls of Fujifilm Neopan Acros SS, which is uh, 100, 100 ISO. Uh, black and white film that they don't make anymore. They're actually apparently going to start making it again soon, which is great. Uh, and it came with two rolls of Ilford XP2400. So I shot a roll of each of those, uh, loading them the proper way. And I'll have shown some of the pictures up until now. You guys have seen my results, and they actually ended up great. So th the trick is there's actually um, a diagram inside this film back that shows you which way to load the film and it has to actually go in and come out this way and then over instead of just going over i just kind of loaded it like a 35 millimeter camera uh, which obviously when you just pull the film over this backing plate this backing plate then goes straight into the back of the camera so you're just gonna have the backing paper sticking out so it's not like putting it in the camera and pulling it across like you would in 35 millimeter it's actually going down but it's going it's like you're loading the camera from the front essentially so sorry Daryl but uh, much appreciated nonetheless but I did figure out this camera I probably should have shot those expired rolls first uh, instead of just jumping right in with that uh, JCH street pan but here we are. Uh, okay, so let's get back to this camera. This is uh, Pentax 645. I've got two film backs for it, 120 film backs. Uh, it came with the uh, SMC Pentax A645 uh, 75mm f2.8. So this is actually the kit lens for this camera, and it gives a uh, uh, 50 millimeter equivalent basically and uh, I don't know the conversion the depth of field conversion for 645 to 35 mil but I believe it's around an f2 or an f1.8 equivalent for depth of field now obviously f2.8 is f2.8 regardless of the format so the amount of light it lets in doesn't change but the depth of field does change uh, depending on the size of the image that you're taking the the actual size of the negative or the sensor depending on what you're shooting uh, I also got uh, it's a little dusty this um, 
150 f3.5. Uh, they all have built-in hoods. Uh, they're all very solid, nice lenses, beautiful clean glass. I got this 200 f4. Again, built-in hood, uh, beautiful, beautiful clean glass. Uh, I got this 1.4 times teleconverter, which I haven't used yet. I've used all three lenses, and I also got a full set of macro extension tubes. I picked this all up for $400 Canadian about a year ago uh, on a Facebook ad, so it wasn't on eBay. But you can get these bodies really cheap on eBay. It's the glass that's going to add up quick. So if you can find something all bundled together like this, you'll generally get it for a lot less money. Now, shooting with this camera, this camera is a full auto exposure camera so if you put it in uh, p mode so there's a mode button it's, it's actually really simple uh, I'll flip that up for you guys so there's just some navigation buttons on the side here you've got set your iso set your mode so you can set it to manual aperture priority or full auto which is p mode um, Right now it just says M1000 because there's no film in the camera. Yeah, it's got a button for the LED here to light up the screen and then you toggle through stuff with these arrows beside the little LED screen. This thing runs on, can I get these out without a tool? Yeah. Runs on six AA batteries. And uh, so it's not one of those weird cameras that's got a bunch of weird batteries that nobody makes anymore. It's just straight up double A's and they pop into the grip. Uh, you turn it on with that switch and the shutter actually won't fire unless there's film inside. But if I take the film back off, you can actually check the shutter that way. So there we go. It's a, it's a noisy camera for sure. No, yeah, no, it doesn't want to play. But uh, it's not going to be very stealth, to say the least, if you're shooting <laughs> on the street with this thing. So, 645 uh, format uses 120 film, but the film runs uh, this way. It runs top to bottom, so you still get this rectangle image. I think it's 3 by 2 looks like three by two and um, so you don't actually there's a lot of four by five cameras that will shoot uh, portrait orientation some Fujifilm 645 cameras shoot portrait orientation this one shoots landscape so if you're used to that then uh, you will be very comfortable with the view you get of this camera it has a depth of field preview lever here um, the eyepiece is massive but it's got a nice diopter built in uh, which is very nice. It does have a continuous uh, setting. It's about, about two frames a second. I don't know, I actually haven't looked it up, but it sounds like about two frames per second. And yeah, it's just, it's a beautiful camera to use. And if you want to get into medium format film photography, you could make a way worse decision than this Pentax 645. Uh, it's not the prettiest camera in the world. It is rather ugly, but ergonomically the grip is phenomenally comfortable. It, uh, the eyepiece is very bizarre, but it works. Um, and they're just bulletproof reliable. This thing it doesn't have a film counter on it, but like it's been loved a lot and, uh, it just still works works like a champ. Uh, just to give you a size comparison, I've got my Contax uh, 159mm, which is like a 80s, 90s uh, film SLR. So they would have been out kind of around the same time. So there's the size comparison. It is an absolutely massive, massive camera. Um, it is hard to be subtle with this camera, especially street photography, and it's probably the only time I would advocate getting a longer lens like this 200 f4, just so you can uh, get some distance between you and your subject, uh, <laughs> unless you're incredibly brave, because yeah, this thing is not discreet in any way, shape, or form. 
Anyways, Daryl, thanks again for the film. I'm sorry I let you down, but I did manage to figure out how to get this thing working. And uh, when we do see each other sometime in the future, I'm going to bring this along. You can bring your Mamiya, uh, that new one that you just got, and we'll go out and shoot some medium format film, which I look forward to. Look at this monster of a camera. Anyways, uh, a couple quick things. I switched to the Fujifilm X-T30 for my studio camera and I've moved my Fujifilm X-T20 back out into the field because this X-T30 autofocuses much better in video than the X-T20. The X-T20 was good, uh, but just in situations like this where it's switching between facial recognition and then it needing to uh, track a subject, uh, this is uh, it's much, much better at doing that. The, the autofocus on this X-T30 is phenomenally good and uh, I'm very excited to be using it. I also picked up a really interesting device for travel. Uh, it, I think it's going to mean that I don't have to bring my laptop with me when I travel anymore, so I'll probably be talking about that in the near future. And yeah, I think that's it. So if you want to get into medium format film photography, you don't want to spend a lot of money, and if you want to be able to capture nice, big, juicy, medium format film negatives, you could do a lot worse than the Pentax 645. Um, yeah, go pick one up and tell them Scott sent you. You won't get anything for it and they don't know who I am, but you can tell them that anyways. See what they say. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.